Boston College releases their depth chart. There's a few surprises and a whole lot of new names you need to know for Monday's game. You are locked on Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome. This is Locked On Boston College, your team every day. I'm your host, AJ Black. Five-hour energy fixes tired fast with zero sugar and a convenient portable size. It's the perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. Go to 5hourenergy.com and use promo code LOCKEDONCFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is valid only until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. Finally, I was sitting down to record this episode, and I was like, where is this depth chart? I figured Bill O'Brien might go down that road of his some of his uh, mentors, like Bill Belichick and Nick Saban, and maybe not even release a depth chart. But little do you know, at about 10, 15, I get a text message from Mitchell Wolf of Eagle Insider. He's like, hey, better now than never, right? And we now have our depth chart. On today's show... I'm going to talk about it. We'll look at what ha- what's who's starting and what. I'll look at surprises, and I'll look at some of the things that concern me about it. We'll get into all of that and much more on this action-packed episode. Before we do that, I want to thank every insider out there that is part of the Eagle's Nest. Thank you so much for signing up. I hope you enjoy the service. We're going to really kick that up soon. Also, I want to thank all the first listeners. If this is your first listen every day, welcome. I hope appreciate you more than words can say but let's just jump in right now depth chart is out i am so excited to talk about it because if you've been listening to me and reading some of the things not a ton of this is a surprise i i've been actually able to go to camp <laughs> it's not the old jeff halfley era where everything's behind closed doors and everything when you get the depth chart you're like whoa what's going on here it's you know if you had followed along with some of the things i said this shouldn't be a big surprise so let's Without further ado, let's pull it up. So if you're on YouTube, you can read it right here. Um, so when you're looking at this, the first thing that pops to me out to me is that J- Grayson James is not on the depth chart right now. I knew he was hurt. He has not when the last week of practice I was at, he did not practice. It was all Jacoby Robinson. So clearly it's enough that he's not playing. Um, I thought that maybe he would have a chance to play. I thought maybe, you know, I don't know how severely it, it wasn't like watching practice and watching him go down and go, Oh gosh, that's a really bad injury. Wonder what happened. Something happened and I'm not sure where it happened or what happened, but that's your number two. And that right there is a little scary because I, I, I have said all along, I know Kevin stone of, of rivals really likes Grayson James. I'm not the biggest fan of him. Um, I think he has some some pop to him, but he also makes a lot of errors and a lot of bad passes and makes big mistakes. That being said, the jump off from Grayson James to Jacoby Robinson is the, like the size of the Grand Canyon. Jacoby Robinson has taken a huge step, but when I watched him in the spring, he could barely throw the football. It seemed like he could barely run a passing offense with BC. He's come a long way from there, but you got to keep Thomas Castellanos healthy right now, because if you go down to uh, Jacoby Robinson, that is, that's, that's tough stuff right there. Um, That's a tough position to put yourself in. So he is your backup quarterback right now. Now you look at the offensive line. Let's talk about the offensive line for a second here, because the biggest question mark and the one, I don't think this answers is the injuries that have hit the offensive line. On Tuesday's press conference, Bill O'Brien was asked about Logan Taylor, who has missed the entire camp and has not been returned to practice. He, I guess, according to Kevin, was in, in pads on Tuesday, but did not practice. He's still on there. He's, as an, he's on there as an or with Dwayne Alec, which is what I expect. You also had Jude Bowery injured. We don't know what happened with Jude Bowery. He's listed as your starting tackle, and he's listed without an or there. So unless this, you know, unless there's some shenanigans going on there, it looks like he's going to start, and that is a huge relief because I honestly do not believe, I really don't believe Logan Taylor's going to play. You know, whether he's feeling good or not, one factor to me is that he has not practiced. 
the fact that he has not practiced, I think, is it, it speaks volume of what his availability is going to be. And to me, it almost means like you're going to miss a couple weeks because, you know, you, do you really want to rush him, like get him back that quickly to, against Duquesne? It, it would make more sense like, if he's ready that you start to, to ease him in against the, you know, practice squad on, on against Duquesne and don't risk hurting him in a game that against an FCS squad. So I, my gut is that Logan Taylor's not going to play and Dwayne Alec will get that start. I, I would look at this and say, my, my thoughts are is if Jude Bowery can go, I feel like pretty confident the offensive line will be okay. Because I, I, if he couldn't go and you had to put plug in Kevin Klein, it's almost like the Grayson James to Jacoby Robinson thing, right? Jude Bowery, I have been singing his praises as a tough dude. He's, you know, last year against Jared Verse, he did a really nice job. He only played a little bit, but I was really excited to see what he could build himself into this season. Uh, Kevin Klein, I'm not sure he could do the things that Bowery could do. And against a physical, the de- you know, off a uh, defense, excuse me, uh, with the Seminoles, you need your best guys out there. And I I have I have drank the Kool-Aid on Dwayne Alec. I think he's going to be okay. I'm not that sure about the tackle position though. You got to have uh Jude Bowery out there. And to me that's that's huge news for BC. Like the fact that he could potentially be there. Um I think that that bodes well for the state of this offensive line. Uh, because a good offensive line we saw with Georgia Tech last week is a is a big deal, and I don't think BC has the offensive line that Georgia Tech does, but I do think that they can do they could still hold their own against the Seminoles. In our second segment, I switching things up. You get the show notes on the side. It's a little different because I literally was putting this together as the depth chart came out. So we're going to continue looking at some things because. I want to look at the wide receivers and halfback position and tight ends and talk a little bit about who earned their spots. Um, Is there any surprises there? We'll get into all of that and much more in just a moment. Want to get in shape but having trouble staying motivated? Make 5-Hour Energy Shots part of your lifestyle and get the energy boost you need to get fit. We all know you sometimes do not want to go to the gym. Take a 5-Hour Energy Shot to give you the feeling and alertness so you can get to the gym. I've talked to before. I Before I had kids, I was a runner. 5-Hour Energies were my, my jam when I would be doing long runs. I used to pack one or two in like a fanny pack. Yeah, AJ wore a fanny pack. And when I hit like my wall, 5-Hour Energy was like the thing that got me through it. So I, I, I highly recommend it because it's zero sugar and a convenient portable size. I can put it in my pocket, run with it. It's the perfect pick me up for getting stuff done. If you go to five hour energy.com, that is the number five hour energy.com and get some five hour energy product today. You can use my promo code locked on CFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. Locked on Boston College, AJ Black here. And we're discussing the depth chart. And looking at some of the 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 um, decisions that were made by Bill O'Brien and his staff. When you look at the halfback position, what stands up to me is that BC has a good running back room. You know, go back to last year when when Kai Robichaux was asked to do a ton, and he got banged up. Remember that running back room fell off a cliff because they just didn't have the guys like Alex Broom was okay. You know, Pat Garwo was, was okay, but they weren't, they weren't Kai Robichaux. You now have Kai Robichaux, Treshawn Ward, Dottrell Jones, Turbo Richards, and Jordan McDonald. That top four itself should be enough to get you through the season. I would imagine you're going to see a lot of these guys at different points during the game. 
I mean, Turbo Richards himself has been used a lot of different ways during practices when he was healthy. And Dottrell Jones, before he got banged up at practice, was one of the most explosive running backs that we saw during camp. So I look at this running back room, and in terms of depth, I I went into this to the summer thinking the wide receivers was with the with the room that like was going to floor me the most. But I I left practice and the end of camp thinking nah, it's the running back room, and for a pro style offense, one that's going to rely on the run a lot, that's good news. I think that that group is is going to be talented. Now, do they have guys that I feel are uh, game changers? I don't think so yet. But do they have solid guys that can do what you need to do to keep your offense humming? That they do. Will they get a ton of respect like, you know, Amari and Hampton from UNC? No, they're not going to. But watch what they do, because I think this offensive line will be good enough to get them going. So I like the way that running back room looks, and I'm glad to see that there's five guys that they have. And that's with Alex Broom on the IR, basically, because he's not playing this year. So you have Broom probably coming back next year. You're also going to have Makai Dodd, uh, a true freshman, coming next year. So this running back room is starting to get back into shape. Now the wide receivers, I love that our our good friend Mitchell Wolf, he always goes with the X, Y, and Z re- receiver route. He taught me all about that, right? This does not have any of that. It's just wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. So your three starting wide receivers are not a surprise. It's Jaden Skeet, Lewis Bond, and Jerron Bradley. But that fa- our favorite term for a depth chart, the one that you guys all love the most, there are two oars in there that surprised me. I thought the wide receivers were pretty much locked down. Now, I shouldn't say that they completely surprised me because at least one of the oars I, I figured should have been there. And that is with um, Jaden Skeet and Reed Harris. I knew Reed Harris had been with the ones a lot. That's the 6'5 wide receiver from Montana. He had a fantastic camp. He had to be up there. But the one that surprised me the most was Jerron Bradley or Dino Tomlin. I was just joking around the other day, and this is not a knock on Dino. I, I just didn't expect him to have much of a role this year. I just haven't seen much of him in this camp. He's out there. He just doesn't make a ton of plays. So he kind of surprised me that he made it that high. Now, you have other names as backups, Jaden McGowan or Shake McGowan. We, I want to use more of the nicknames um, on the show. I'm going to start doing it more, so you get, get used to it. He's down there. He's a, a backup as well. And then you got a few, uh, you know, more depth guys after that. Tight end, again, not a surprise. Jeremiah Franklin or Kamari Morales. You're going to see both of them. And I am not really sure for the first time in years, back to the Adazio days, because I think Adazio used to run it all the time. You're not going to, I don't think you're going to see a lot of two tight end sets. Um, I didn't see a lot of it this summer. I don't think it's going to happen. So it'll be a lot of Morales or a lot of Franklin out there. Um, And then one of the stories of the summer at number four was Danny Edgehill. Danny Edgehill, um, out of Zavarian brothers, he's a walk-on freshman, and he made that that group, and he deserved it. He looked good. This is a guy that played really well during camp. So that was one of those, like, surprises that came up because, if again, I I write about BC sports all the time. And before the summer camps, if you asked me who Danny Edgehill was, I would have, I'd be like, I think I know who he is, but I don't know. Now I know who he is. And it wouldn't, it would not shock me in the least. He's a preferred walk on. If he goes that route where he's a scholarship athlete by next year, the way he looked in practice and the way he was already taking a lot of snaps, he's got, I, I imagine he's going to earn himself a scholarship at some point, the way he's playing. I mean, that's a, those are great stories, right? Like guys that walk on and become scholarships. That's a, such a cool story. So there's your offense. We went through the offense. A few surprises. The fact that, you know, um, Grayson James is not on it. The fact that Jude Bowery is on it. Those are the big surprises. In a moment, I'm going to wrap things up by looking at the defense because the defense had even more surprises than the ones I was expecting. We'll get into all of those in just a moment.
You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every single regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. You're, maybe you're on FanDuel and you're making your bets. You're watching the Patriots. I saw their over-under. It was four and a half. I was talking about that the other day. And they're the team, the most popular team to take the under on. Well, maybe you agree with that. You can go on FanDuel. You can make your first bet, and you get Sunday ticket. Um for the first three weeks. That is a cool deal. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Fuel up with factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Kato. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. With the 35 different meals and more than 60 add ons to choose from every week, you'll have more than a ton of new flavors to explore. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Love that. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, ma- maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash lockdown50 and use code lockdown50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code lockdown50 at factormeals.com slash lockdown50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Locked on Boston College, AJ Black. We're wrapping things up, but before we do, after this is your first listen of the day, check out Locked on Knowles while you get a chance. Love to hear what they have to say about this upcoming game. You could check it out. They have Brian Smith as their host. It's a great show. Check out Locked on Knowles wherever you get YouTube or your podcast. And again, a shout out to my Eagles Nest Insider. We had a new sign up yesterday. I'm so excited to see it. And I hope you might take the, up the opportunity. The details are in the show notes. I give you insider information, talk to you. We do all sorts of things. I do videos. We have lots of good time over there on the Eagles Nest. So check that out as well. Now, the defense. The defense, I thought, was a little bit more um, up in the air. And there were some surprises to me on the defense. So th- what wasn't surprising to me was the defensive ends. The starting defensive ends of Devon, Donovan Azaraku and Neto Ekpala. What was surprising to me were the backup defensive ends or edges because you had Quintavious Hudgens and Edward Kalenki. Edward Kalenki, I knew would be hit the backup on one end, but I swore it was going to be Josiah Griffin. They even gave him to us immediate one of the media sessions because I thought that would be the guy. And he made some plays this camp. So Quintavious Hudgens, who they call Q, he, he made more. I can I can understand that. I just didn't think it was going to happen. So that's an interesting one. Uh, Hutchins has been a one of those practice darlings, One um, especially back to the spring game. I think he had a big spring game as well. Um, he's a name that you'll, you'll want to know about. So that's Q Hutchins. Defensive tackle. So first of all, you got Cam Horsley and George Rooks. Not a surprise. If you were listening to me and some of the things that I've talked about, the backups of Owen Stoudmire and said Cup McConnell. I've been telling you that all summer, uh, since 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 midway through the summer, especially with said. Um, that's the transfer from Illinois. He has had a killer end of camp, um, and it'll be a guy that's playing really well. So has Stoudmire. Stoudmire was someone I just had kind of written off as maybe you know a depth player, but he looked good. What did surprise me though is two things. When you go down the depth a little bit, first of all, Quan Williams been waiting for this guy to pop and the fact he's listed as the third stringer is kind of it's kind of sad he's a junior now this was a four-star defensive tackle you brought in from maryland i you know i i understand it he hasn't when i watch a camp he's not a name that pops to me um and as, as making a ton of plays but it's just it's kind of a bummer when you get a guy like that you just hope he becomes something more than he is and he doesn't the other surprise is that they have officially pushed Gilbert Tongrongu from edge to defensive tackle. And again, uh, my descriptions of him on the show, I've been saying he looks bigger than an edge, like thicker. And this is what he's there for. He's a thicker uh, defensive tackle. And that makes sense. Now, again, uh, for linebacker, 
they only have two positions listed because they're going so much with nickel that they've only needed to. And that's Cam Arnold and, and Davion Crouch. Now, you can look at the backups and whatnot. You got Sayoni Hala and Owen McGowan. Again, not really a surprise. But for the folks that have been asking, Bryce Steele is the third stringer. And he had been all summer long. Um, he's still, it seems like he's still just working his way back from his cancer um, and has uh, f- officially kind of just, that's where he's at. Nickelback, Kari Johnson or Cam Martinez. I don't know if Cam is back from injury, but he missed a lot of camp at the end of the year, uh, end of the summer. Um, I thought he looked good when he was out there, but definitely I think Kari probably will be your starter there. Your starting corners are Max Tucker and Amari Jackson with Ryan Turner and Brayquise Brown as the backups, the ter- the two transfers. That's, again, not a big surprise. And the last big surprise on defense, I thought the safeties were pretty much locked up at Jalen Cheek and KP Price until I really started paying attention at the last practice. And I noticed, hey, number 28 is out there a lot. Carter Davis, and he's listed as the starter or as with an or next to K- Jalen Cheek. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he plays more. Uh, he's had a great, he had a great camp and he was someone that Bill O'Brien specifically uh, brought up at different points. So you could see Carter Davis as your starting safety. And there's your, there's your defense. Special teams go super quick. Bryant Worrell. I, one of my positions that I have family members listening to uh, on the team is long snapper. I got tons of, um, tons of family members of long snappers that listen. So he's the starter with Cooper, uh, Cooper Crook or Jackson Gugney as the backups. The kicker is going to be Sam Candotti. I was punter Sam Candotti, and they don't have a uh, kicker. Uh, it's either Con- Connor, uh, Liam Connor, or Luca Lombardo. And then the kick returners, punt returners, it's exactly what I said in all my practice reports. It's Jaden McGowan or Cameron Martinez or Turbo Richard or Treshawn Ward. So it's like the four guys that I watched kicking, they haven't made a decision there or they don't want to tell you. The one thing I want to say about the kick returns, I'm really glad Lewis Bond's not on there. He was kick returning and I'm like, please don't get him killed. You need your good wide receiver out there. I know he can be explosive at times during kick returns, but you got enough other guys out there that can do that kind of stuff. I'm really pumped that he's not, so you don't have to worry about that. So there is our depth charts. You got it. On tomorrow's show, it's prediction time. We'll be joined by Mitchell Wolf. Mitch is going to, from Eagle Insider, he's going to come in and give his predictions. I'll give you my predictions. Will we pick BC? I saw some of those other podcasts are, or will we be more of the negative Nellies? You'll have to wait and see. Follow me on Twitter at AJBlack247. Check out my work on Eagle Insider. And if you're listening to this for the first time, thank you so much for checking us out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a five-star review. It does help our podcast tremendously. This is AJ Black. I will be back again tomorrow for yet another episode of Locked On Boston College, your team every day.